so this is uh, my Zenith 601. Uh, this has the groove wheels. This is an earlier model. Groove wheels, groove brakes, groove landing system, or groove, or whatever. Um, I lost my left brake. I did my, I pulled it out of the hangar, did my uh, little brake check right before taxiing on out, and the left brake went completely to the floor. So, put it back in the hangar, and I uh, haven't had a chance to look at it until a little bit ago. And the other night I came in, I thought it maybe need fittings or a line or something. It turns out these were just really loose, so I don't know if they had loosened over time. Uh, the backstory on this plane is it sat for about uh, 13 years before I got a hold of it and finished it up. So it's very likely that these were just never fully tightened, or maybe over the course of those 13 years of the sitting they just got loose. Whatever the reason, I think that's the culprit, so I just went ahead and tightened this up. And uh, it, it, I mean, it seems tight. We're going to find out if it leaks. So part of that is uh, flushing these brakes. So the way you do this on these older groove systems, assuming it's the same on any newer one, they, they don't really have a reservoir. You can plumb a reservoir in, but the reservoir is somewhat part of the master cylinder. And as a result, when you go to bleed them, it is easiest and most efficient to just bleed them from the bottom up. So if I can get this little cover off. All right, we'll try this again with some pliers. There we go. So there's just a, a standard little bleeder. And uh, what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook got a little oil pump that's full of the Milspec 5606 brake fluid. Well, it's actually a hydraulic fluid. And that's what Groove recommends with these. I've heard of some people using ATF. It has very similar properties. Um, I'm just gonna stick with the 5606 stuff because it's what they recommend and it's what they ha that I have on hand. But essentially, you just hook a little pump up and uh, bleed it from the bottom up. You're just kind of filling this up, the, the hose and the reservoir that's up top. And so, so after you get this off, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and go up top and uh, Loosen up the little uh, little bleeder air air vent thing on the uh, master cylinder. Here we are in the uh, cockpit of the plane. I only have single brakes on this, and I'm assuming that that makes this a lot easier. But uh, here are the master cylinder kind of reservoir combo units, and you can see there's that little uh, looks like Delrin or some sort of plastic plug up top, and that just is the the vent hole for these. So we'll need to loosen that with a hex bit. Alright, so there's that little plug that I pulled out, and uh, yeah, it just comes out right at the top there, you'll be able to pull it out. And then I just put some uh, towels down underneath here, that way if it overflows by a little bit, it won't make a mess of the cabin. Alright, so, so to pressurize these from the bottom here, just got a pretty simple uh, oil pump. Uh, this canister is full of that 5606 fluid. And then just a hose that connects it to the bleeder barb on the bottom. And I'm just going to loosen that up. I actually don't have a wrench that small, so I'm just going to use a pair of channel locks. But I'll go ahead, I'm just going to loosen it up, and then I will pump the fluid through and just kind of keep checking up top to make sure that it doesn't overflow the top. And then once it, it does, if it happens to overflow the top, which I imagine that it will, um, I'm probably just going to take this little guy, put a jar under it, and just bleed out, you know, a little bit, maybe a, a half of an inch or so, maybe even last quarter inch or so in the jar. And then that'll just give me a little bit of a buffer in that reservoir inside for expansion and contraction through the winter and summer. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I came down here and I just checked the pedal feel and it's solid now, um, which is promising. None of it's overspilled the top yet, um, it's definitely solid. I don't want to risk it being underfilled, so again, I'm just going to overfill it and then drain a little bit out. That way I'm kind of sure of how much. And then I am going to tighten up all the fittings and top off this one too, just to make sure that we're 100% with this entire brake system. All right, so I think that just about emptied this out. Actually, no, it didn't. This is still fairly full. Let's take a look inside here. There's a decent bit in there. I'm actually just going to take this opportunity to top this off. This is kind of some really sticky, nasty stuff. Um, I have heard, like I said earlier, I have heard of people putting ATF in. Uh, I don't know if I can necessarily recommend that. I'm not an A&P, certainly. Um, 
doesn't sound like a bad option to me. I know it is compatible with uh, Buna N uh, seals, the, the seals that they use in these. But you'd have to call Groove as far as their actual recommendations on that. What I've been doing just to kind of, mit kind of mitigate any uh, possibility of there being air bubbles in this. They should all float to the top as you're filling this up, but um, I just want to alleviate any issues. Um, I've just been trying to release this until it starts cooling, and then I'll put this on and start pumping again. So, there you can see it's kind of flowing now. And then you can turn it a little bit more if you want and just pump it up. see how things are looking there. All right, so we're up top, and as you can probably see, if I get this light, that has overfilled the top of the cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drain a little bit out, and we should be in pretty good shape from there. Well, the original plan was to leak a little bit out into this jar. Uh, unfortunately, that's not gonna work. I don't really have anything else that's very low profile, so I think I'm just gonna leak a little bit out of it, let it go onto this rag. Um, anytime I use rags that have uh, uh, any hydrocarbons or oil or anything on them, I generally just throw them out anyway. They're not super useful for, for cleaning anything. Um, so this is right now is still just hand tight for the most part. I'm just going to let it run a little bit out here. and good with the channel locks and put the rubber end back on and we should be in pretty good shape all right so just the final test for this guy i'm just sitting in here and i'm kind of pressing on both these pedals and they feel uh, almost exactly the same i don't think there's air caught in them i certainly think that this will work out good so uh, yeah hopefully uh this helps you guys out it really wasn't too bad to do i'm sure there is a more proper way to do this uh, this this seemed to work for me if you have any other suggestions on how to do this in the future uh, please leave them in the comments below i'm always trying to learn and this is my first experimental that I've built fully. I've helped with a couple others in the past, but this one's this one's all mine. And it's uh, it's been an interesting ride, certainly buying somewhat of an abandoned airplane, um, but I've been able to kind of shape it up and, and make it somewhat nice, and it suits my needs for now, and it's certainly a, a really cheap way to get airborne. So uh, thanks for the watch, guys. If you have any other suggestions, just uh, let me know.